mean, Crawford? Did Dark Falls get away again? Don't worry. Everything is fine. Allow me to explain. Currently, we believe that this Dark Falls may have fled into space-time, just like it did before. But this time, it's on the ropes. It has limited regenerative abilities. However, it can only be fully recovered at that dock in Stia's nerve center. Which means, it will have to rematerialize at some point. How do you know all of that? Lysis' records. And... The data that Elma and I put together helped a little. Lysis created detailed records of the battle with Dark Falls that took place in Caveras a hundred years ago. He painted a very clear picture of it. I almost felt like I was there myself while reading those records. Anyway... He wrote a lot about the previous Dark Falls behavior patterns, as well as activity cycles. It sounds like the Ark's defenders of Caveras had a very hard time dealing with it. And he wrote about how, just when they had dealt lethal damage to it with concentrated fire, it disappeared somewhere for a while. And when it reappeared, the damage had all been repaired somehow. That somewhere was that place in Stia. Wow. Lysis wrote all that? Yes. I wasn't quite sure myself until I saw it at Stia's nerve center with my very own eyes. However, we had always thought that Dark Falls and the Dolls came from somewhere outside of Alpha. To think those bases were right under our nose the whole time. One can't really help but wonder who built them, and when. But, I suppose that's not important right now. Our next course of action is quite simple. Once Dark Falls rematerializes from space-time, we hit it with Central Cannon. We've mostly figured out its potential emergence points. It won't get by us unnoticed. But even if it did somehow, we still know where it wants to go. We just need to keep attacking and damaging it. Every little bit helps. It doesn't matter how long it takes, just as long as we win in the end. However, there is one problem. We can't be certain that it will be the same Dark Falls as the one prior to our data collection. It might be completely different, and in ways for which our data cannot account. You know, that is actually fairly likely. It is Dark Falls we're talking about, after all. We have several backup plans, but there's no telling how effective they may be. So... 
the strength of each Ark's defender is really what it will come down to. So when it does reemerge, I'd like you to be at the forefront of the fighting, as usual. What about us? There's something I'd like you to do. I'll contact you about it later. Okay, sounds good. I know, it's been rough, but we're almost there. Whatever it takes, we'll get it done. Just like we've been doing this whole time. Right? Everyone, thank you all for coming. This is the moment every one of us has been preparing for. To defeat the cruel enemy who mercilessly wiped out so many of our friends that day in Alio Town. To defeat Dark Falls. It must have fled to space-time to recover after we landed a good shot on it from Central Cannon. But it can't fully recover without its dock and Stia. It has to rematerialize at some point. That's when we strike. Now that it's completed, the cannon is a lot more robust. We should be able to fire it several times. But it still takes some time to warm up initially. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do anything about that. Once Dark Falls appears, I need you to keep it busy and buy us some time. You've faced so many obstacles, and made it through all of them. Dark Falls is an unimaginably powerful foe. There is no possible way to fully prepare for that kind of strength. But, even in the face of such overwhelming odds, I have the utmost faith that we will prevail. Alio, Ratem, Kaveris, and Stia, defenders from all four regions, are united toward a single goal. As far as we know, this is entirely unprecedented in Halfa's history. The entire planet is united as one for the first time. In order to preserve that unity going forward, this is a battle that we can't afford to lose. I'm asking all of you for your support. I need everyone to stay ready to deploy at a moment's notice. Victory will be ours. I guess this is it. Yeah. For the sake of... Yes? For the sake of Halfa, we will... We... must win. Yep.
Who's there? Oh, it's you. No, I'm fine. <sighs> you know, I'm reminded of it every time I come here. That battle with Neil Steer. And... I think of that Ark's defender, who sacrificed his life. Protecting someone like me. It's not fair. What? But... But he had his own life, too. His own... Dreams, his own hopes, just like all of us. And I... I took all of that away from him, forever. Excuse me, I can't get behind that line of thinking. Conway? Forgive me. I overheard you talking. Will you allow me to explain some things about us? We have a simple rule. Never leave anyone behind. In battle, it's not the enemy that you need to fear the most. It's the loss of trust between squad mates. It's having to wonder if you'll be left behind if you get cut off or wounded in battle. That kind of fear will hang over your head. This rule of ours is meant to eliminate that fear. We all know that we've got each other's backs. And that allows us to perform our duties free from worry. The defender who died protecting you was only following that rule. He refused to leave you behind. Because of that, more lives would be saved as a result. I'm sure that's what he believed. And that is indeed how things turned out. That's only because I was overcome by rage. What counts in battle is the result. Protocol is important too, but how many enemies we kill and how many of us survive. That's what really counts at the end of the day. If our losses are heavy, it's Commander Glenn who shoulders that responsibility. And me, as adjutant. So, he was only doing his duty. That's why I want you to hold your head up, please. Conway. I have nothing more to say on the matter. 
Thank you. I hope this was not presumptuous of me. Now, I must return to my duties. Working through my feelings is not an easy task, but... Conway is right. I need to hold my head up so I can move forward. I have to carry the torch. For the Ark's defender who gave his life for me, too.
hazard is complete. Thank you for joining. Oh, I didn't know you were here. Just looking around. It looks like the Ark's defenders here are busy, as usual. At least their staffing and supply situations seem to be a little better. But now that they're operating deep within Stia, I'm sure their responsibilities have increased. And yet, I haven't heard a single complaint from anyone. Each and every one of them has an important role to play, and that keeps their spirits up. I've... seen all of this somewhere before. Yeah. Town used to handle the defense of all outlying areas by itself. It was responsible for the entire area on the other side of the mountain from Central City. And, as you know, they did it all with very few Ark's defenders. It was hard enough just to patrol that area, let alone maintain equipment and prepare food. They gave it their all every day. And on top of that, they never knew when dolls might attack. Sometimes, they would be up all night defending against a sudden assault. And yet none of them ever complained or felt sorry for themselves. In fact, it seemed like they enjoyed life to the fullest. I didn't realize it at the time, but they were all so focused on playing their respective parts. And that's why they were able to give their all to everything they did. They never lost sight of their dream for a peaceful world. Now, we're the ones who have to carry that torch. And I was reminded of that responsibility just now, while looking at the Stia camp. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go on for so long. So much has happened. Sometimes I overthink everything. What we've been through, and what we will go through. 
I still need to process all these feelings. I'll see you later. Jagged rocks and hardly any trees or grass anywhere. And dolls all over the place. I don't think the old me would have lasted even a single day out here. But here I am with the two of you somehow. I guess that means I've gotten a little stronger, right? Oh, well, I guess if you say so, it must be true. You know, lately, I've been reading Manon's journal a lot. Especially, everything she's written about enemies. She writes about stuff like how each enemy behaves, and when they're vulnerable to attack. In the past, I would just sort of skim and get the general idea. But now I really drill down on it, and try to find ways to put it into practice. And by doing that, I've kind of come to understand some things. 
like about what Manon would do in various situations. I kind of see which scenarios she might have problems with. And I find myself thinking, what would I do in that situation? So I feel like I'm finally starting to find my own fighting style. Yeah, I'm trying out lots of different stuff. I've learned that there's always more than one way of doing things. I wouldn't be where I am now without Manon. I hope I can repay her someday. And you too, of course. That's why I have to keep working hard to keep up with you two. Okay, break time is over. I just thought of a new combat tactic. I can't wait to try it. Well, see you later. After a tough fight, they can't even rest and recover when it's this hot all the time. It's really like they're just fighting non-stop. It'd be nice if they could at least take it easy while they're at the camp. I guess they probably don't need our help, but still. Do you think there's anything we can do for them? Something to lift their spirits. Hmm. Like what? Oh, what about if I make some food for them again? Would that work? They're always eating that hard bread, but I'm sure they'd enjoy a good meal once in a while, too. Yeah, that might work. Thanks for the advice. Hmm, I better start gathering up some ingredients then. <laughs> Let's see. Last time, 
I made something hot because they were physically and mentally exhausted. But this time, I think something cool and refreshing is in order. I could probably put Caveras fruits and vegetables to good use. <laughs> I think I have an idea. Oh, hey! It's you. How perfect. We were just looking for you. Correct. We're here seeking treatment for the wounded, as well as looking to resupply. Once we complete that, we have but to await their recovery. Wasn't there something you wished to discuss? Commander? Uh, yeah, there was. Ahem, <clears throat> you, uh, really helped us out the other day. Ah. Uh, wasn't there more? Uh, we've had a lot of ups and downs during this campaign. We found ourselves constantly wounded and lacking supplies. Even after years of fighting, we hadn't made it to the interior of Stia. Before you three arrived, I was even considering withdrawing from the region. But my troops' morale was still high. I planned on one last offensive before they finally burned out. And then... You three showed up. I had heard rumors. You saved Ratem, and even survived a Dark Falls attack. Then, you even paved the way for the reconstruction of Caveras. I was skeptical, but I didn't have any other options. So I figured I'd try my luck with the three of you. And... Uh, we all know how that turned out. Although the battle still isn't over, I need to say this. Thank you. Yes, I owe you my thanks as well. It sure is. We haven't secured the entire Stia region yet. And the doll's plant is still operational. We still have a lot of work to do. Conaway. Sir! I'm going to head back now. You oversee the treatment of our wounded and meet me there. Yes, sir. The Commander almost never gives thanks to anyone. 
He does express gratitude sometimes, but I don't think I've ever heard him actually say the words, thank you. I suppose that demonstrates how much respect he has for you. Well, I'd better get going now. Let's meet again, soon.
I didn't know you were back in Alio. I hear you completed your assignment in Stia. They are the best of the best, but the numbers were not on their side. I'm sure your support was a huge help in that regard. It certainly was something to see Crawford act so decisively like that. Neil Steele was Crawford and Glenn's most hated enemy. At first, Crawford said he would let Glenn handle it. But the truth is... that he really wanted to settle that old score by Glenn's side. Fortunately, Dahl's activity in Alio at the time was minimal. It was an opportunity that might have never come again. That's why I didn't hesitate to give my blessing to his decision. I'm glad the three of them were finally able to close that chapter of their battle. Crawford, Glenn, and Hibana. So, you knew about Hibana. Hibana and Glenn were close for a long time. She was always the type who wore her heart right on her sleeve. I'm not saying they were the same, but her straightforwardness was a lot like Ina's. When Glenn and Hibana met Crawford, the three of them started working together. Crawford and Glenn's relationship is still more or less the same as it always was. They've always gotten into it over differences of opinion. And it was always Hibana who would step in to mediate things. She had a knack for finding the compromise and getting them to shake on it. And she was really intuitive. She would just sort of throw a plan together and somehow, it almost always worked out. Which is the exact opposite of Crawford's unrelenting rationality, of course. Yet, they always seemed to get along. All three of them had very different personalities, but they just seemed to mesh with each other. Their teamwork in battle was especially impressive. Glenn would take the front, Crawford brought up the rear, and Hibana would float between them. And the three of them would just chew through the toughest dolls like that. It was a foregone conclusion that those three would one day lead Alio. But then, Hibana's death created a big void. Without her, Crawford and Glenn set off on separate paths that they each thought was best. Now that the score's been settled with Neil Stia, hopefully, that void can finally be filled. Hmm? Uh, looks like there's some trouble. I think I better get going. We'll finish this chat some other time. Until then.